good morning everybody hope you guys are doing well it is february 5th 2023 we're getting a little bit of snow early this morning it wasn't supposed to be like this it's 8 29 in the morning uh, it wasn't supposed to be snowing until about seven o'clock tonight and it was only supposed to be about two or three hours of light snow flurries later but how's everyone doing remember if you guys like what i'm doing please like and subscribe and don't forget a little bit later on today we're going to be doing the announcement for the two fifty dollar gift card winners i'm really excited to do that for you guys i hope all of you tune in to see who won um since it is the fifth i've already found who the winners are so i'm excited about that and uh yeah looking forward to doing this for you guys And it's kind of like a, like a, like, like a, a rainy sleet falling down right now. We're just gonna drive up to Bear real quickly. When I first went outside, it was like tiny little ice shavings coming down, and it wasn't much at all. But this is what I do. This is what I do, everybody. As you can see now, unfortunately, this is, it still looks a little icy on the windshield. <laughs> So we're going to be going against the grain of everyone going to bear to avoid the traffic. Yeah, it's definitely just like uh, mostly rain right now, but I'm hoping the higher up, oh no, there's some snow in here too. So I guess this is a wintry mix. That we weren't even supposed to get anything until tonight. And I looked at about one in the morning also, just to see if everything was still on, like Donkey Kong for tonight. And now instead of four hours of snow, it shows five hours of snow as of this morning. But hey, we'll take this precipitation that was not supposed to be here this morning. So it's about time it's, it's wrong in our favor once for once, you know? Just a short update, you guys. Nothing, nothing big, nothing special. <laughs> hope you all, hope you all are doing great today. Thanks for the support on this channel, you guys. Never imagined this would be where this thing was going. And also, thank you guys for what you're doing for Chris, the coffee shop owner. So you guys are freaking amazing. He is so excited. Okay, there's a lot of traffic coming here to Bear, so we're probably going to just turn around and head back the other way. I think that's what we are going to do. But yeah, there's Bear, all socked in with clouds. I just don't want to deal with that traffic. There's no point. You guys get, get the point. It's... A little bit of snow and rain mixed together.
Excuse me, I'm a little tired. And in the next week, I'm gonna uh, do a video specifically for the sledding. And then even though it's only one video, I'm gonna put it in the playlist section just so we can uh, have a video for you, for you guys to always look at. So we're gonna go up Sheephorn. Hopefully hit more just just the snow, snow, not rain and snow. We're gonna go up to the top of Upper Moon Ridge. But you know what? This is one of the sledding areas here. You just gotta find a place to park. It's this whole gully area that goes all the way through Moon Ridge. Why it's great, I'm gonna do a specific video for the sledding, you guys, and I'm gonna record the whole drive so you guys can see exactly where to go for each place. Instead of like actually doing the whole drive, I, I'm gonna like uh, turn on the video when we're about to make turns onto certain streets and explain to you guys where we're going and then turn it off so we can get there quickly for you guys so you're not wasting your time like geez i don't want to watch 10 minutes of a video to get to the damn sledding area so right here you would turn right usually to get to one of the, the really good spots right there but remember guys this is in the middle of the neighborhood so i just want everyone just to be as awesome and respectful as you guys always are so i don't get a lot of crap from the locals for giving you guys these secret spots I will always help you guys out. I will always help you guys out. As I said, I, I get I get bitched at a lot. I really do for helping you guys. <laughs> Go figure. You know? Go figure. A good family friend of ours, Greg Lombardi, his wife Missy. And, and their kids. Greg was a friend of my older brother, Steve, and they actually, I think, owned both of these houses. Yep, Lombardi's, it says on the door there. But this was their, their, their main vacation house up here. And sadly, and as I said, I've known them since, since I was a little kid. My oldest brother, who he's friends with, is 18 years older than me. So they were grown-ups basically when I was a little kid. Um, they were adults and she actually when I was going through a lot of my struggles my first couple years up here she had found this channel randomly and was like oh my gosh Nick I can't believe you're you're in Big Bear you're you're doing videos like this and she was going through really awful cancer you guys and she ended up not not making it and that was really 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 tough for me because Back then also, I I was, I had a lot of attitude because I was so upset about how life was treating me. And, and so we had kind of a falling out. Um, it's a long story. I did apologize, but then I heard through the, from, from my mom that she had passed away. And it just, it just kills me because she was so nice. And, so loving and they, they have a lot of children and grown children you know 20s and stuff like that late their teens and 20s and i just can't imagine losing your mom you guys i can't imagine losing your mom my mom's 80 years old i and she's my favorite favorite person in the world and i i worry about her so much but anyway, we're going to go on what is usually a really rough street to drive on when there's ice and snow. We're good right now. But look at how beautiful this is now. We're getting a little clearing. It's turning into something special. Driving it this, this time in the morning is really, really, really beautiful. A reason why I like golfing and I didn't get to golf at all this last season because of being married. <laughs> uh, 
uh, stupid excuse, but it's the truth. Um, I loved going golfing also because for me, since I'm, I have a really hard time getting up early, especially now that like I do my own thing. For five and a half years, I haven't had a boss. I generate my own income. Like it's really, really, really tough for me to wake up when I open for work at 10 a.m. every day because I'm losing a lot of the day and a lot of the best part of the day when it's the most peaceful, when when the birds are waking up, the animals start to come out. It's just, it's, that's why I love golfing so much because it, as much as I don't look forward to those, those early tea times, I love being up once I'm there. You know, yeah, it takes me forever to drag myself out of bed, but I love getting up. And then imagine golfing at this golf course there right next to uh, Bear Mountain, guys. It's just, it's just like a dream. It's just heavenly. And I've golfed all over the world. <clears throat> I tried playing, um, I was actually uh, in the process after my baseball career ended because of cannabis in high school. I got caught with cannabis in high school and they kicked me out of school and my whole life was baseball, baseball, baseball. I had I had people from Cal State Fullerton watching me play in high school my freshman year. Being as little as I am, I was still throwing the ball in my freshman year, 85 miles an hour. Everyone was just like, how does he do this? Like, like how is that possible? And I, I always took it for granted that I had such a gun, you know? <clears throat> always took it for granted. Um, but that ruined everything. Just getting caught with pot at school ruined everything for me. Um, and then I decided to take up golf because I used to like to go to the driving range and just hit the ball a mile. I was like Happy Gilmore at the freaking driving range, I swear. Everybody would trip out. How does this little guy hit the ball so damn far? Like I was always hitting the ball off the back nets and stuff, carrying the ball like 295 to 315, carrying the ball. <clears throat> At, at, at this small size and it just tripped everyone out there's maybe the 5,000 rounds of golf I've played maybe three people have ever outdriven me um, it's I'm not bragging about it I'm just stating facts I'm just I'm not trying to brag about it just stating facts but I'm a uh, I really wanted to uh, learn how to actually play golf because my grandpa was my best friend for a long time before he passed away and I decided to learn how to play and once I hit that first good shot and it just felt so good in my hands and, um, and it, it didn't take long um, I decided to get lessons and my parents when they still had money sponsored me to get lessons from a gentleman named Glenn Deck out of Pelican Hill in Newport Coast because that's that's where we lived not in Pelican Hill but we lived in another really gorgeous neighborhood up there um, and he is a top 50 USGA coach and has quite a few L um, at the time quite a few L LGPA <laughs> LPGA players and a couple PGA players on his belt and uh, <clears throat> I was taking about five or six days worth of lessons each week so about six hours a week at 200 bucks per hour and I'd get to play Pelican for free though all the time to practice after every session and so in the mornings it was wake up go do uh go work on my short my really short game like my putting and stuff like that my putting and my chipping and stuff like that and then I would go see him and we would work with the super high speed cameras on my swing and and then afterwards I would go to the golf course and play. I was playing golf seven days a week. Like literally playing on the golf course seven days a week. It was great. Never got sick of it. I kept all my scorecards for about a two year period. I have a huge box full of my scorecards. Um, but that was my goal. And I'm sorry to bug you guys with this. I know you're here for this for the freaking weather stuff. So, but you guys are my family, and I don't have anyone to really talk to. You know, like I talk to you guys and my wife, and that's about it. So thank you guys for listening. But yeah, so that's how my golf career uh, almost became. And also, my golf coach, 
he got me signed up to be in a uh, what was it I think it was the Hooters tour or what was it it was I, I'm pretty sure it was the Hooters tour to qualify for the Hooters tour or the Golden State tour and we had a qualifying round at Strawberry Farms which is good because all of these spots were, were local local to me and my friend's dad Doug DeSensei who played baseball because I I grew up around all these people he he owned Strawberry Farms for years and and at the time he was still still the owner and he was there and um, but I didn't make the cut I missed it I think by like five or six strokes I tell people I missed it by one stroke but that's a lie as I get older the more honest I am <laughs> I missed it by about five or six strokes but playing from the tips like you should as a pro and walking a course like that when I wasn't that used to walking I in all my practice rounds I was supposed to be walking because golf's not a game of polo I was supposed to be walking to get used to it my coach was like you have to do this you have to do this it, if you want to get on the pro circuit you have to know how this is gonna feel how this is gonna treat your body and it's a lot of walking you guys and where I was practicing at Pelican Hill it's a lot of hills so I was over it um, so I kind of struggled walking the course because it's not an easy course and if you're not right down the center of the fairway you're in you're in you're in danger so missed the cut and then I got diagnosed with Crohn's disease and it was bad I couldn't do anything for about a year so I gave up golf um, to the disappointment of my mom who she put up a lot of money for that you know I didn't want to let you down mom I really didn't but the, the fact that you gave me the opportunity and gave me a chance to do what I was loving what I was doing and just just once again a reflection of how amazing you are mom you're, you're the most amazing woman in the world that woman is such an angel you guys she put up with so much from me I love you so much mom I was not Okay, look, I was a kid who had a beautiful heart, right? But I would do lots of bad things, like take from my mom's purse. And I'd feel guilty. I would cry half the time I was doing it, feeling so bad for what I'm doing, but I would still do it because I needed to get my green. <clears throat> and today, she doesn't, she doesn't have any money. The 2008 housing crisis absolutely destroyed her. And I've been very, very fortunate to make a couple extra extra bucks the past five and a half years with my other business, not this YouTube channel. This this YouTube channel doesn't make me anything, but that's why this is another passion of mine because you know I do this as hard as I can without making money because I love it. Like it makes me happy. If the money comes, it's icing on the cake. If not, I still have my cake. So wonderful. But uh, I've been able to pay for my mom's car for the past five and a half years and um that's been the greatest feeling in the world i'll never be able to pay her back for as much as i took from her purse at, as a kid it just kills me um and i'm saying a kid e even into my mid-20s you guys like i was i was spoiled rotten spoiled rotten we had the i grew up the mtv cribs lifestyle i grew up on a little private island in newport beach called linda isle our house right now is worth 13 million on Zillow, the house I grew up in. Um, I'd be dr dropped off to school in Rolls Royces, Mercedes, Jaguars. Like it was, it was a crazy life. But as a really youngster, that's that's how you feel everyone lives because you don't know any different. And it's not like my parents let me off the island much. I would sneak off and ride my bike to Balboa Island or my friend's house on Harbor Island Drive, which was right across the bay from 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 where my house was and like his dad owns Toyota of Escondido and one of the big founders in the TRD section of Toyota and stuff like every, my my best friend my next door neighbor his dad um, started and owns I think he sold it years ago now but owns United Rentals like every single every every place that you see that has any construction going on has a, a United Rentals truck Everywhere you go, I can guarantee you that. So 
Like these are the people that I grew up with. Um, my other best friend, Tyrone Rothschild, his dad, Peter Rothschild, they lived a couple houses down from us. They, uh, his dad was a, a, a professional boat racer and, uh, and, and then he started the, uh, these restaurants called Dukes. And so there's, there's a Dukes on the pier in Huntington Beach. There's, I think some Dukes in Hawaii and he, he owns that. Another one of my neighbors was Donald Bren who ran and owned the Irvine company, which was one of the, he at one point was one of the, the wealthiest people in the whole country. About nine houses down for me was Fletcher Jones Jr. And, and I, I, I knew Fletcher's daughter. Um, we used to kind of bully her a bit and it, it, it just wasn't cool. Um, the Crevier BMW people lived right down the street. The the people who started the Islands chain lived two houses down from me. The Islands restaurant chain. Like, it was, guys, it was just a crazy, crazy, crazy life. Elsie Stater, I don't remember her husband, but he's one of the Stater brothers, lived on that island also. And Elsie Stater, his wife, was the nicest, nicest, nicest lady ever, like a grandma. Every Halloween, every house there gave away good full-size candies it seemed like but she was always giving us extra full-size candies and like uh just sweet 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 loving people i mean guys there's 107 houses on this little private island off of bayside drive and pch and these people i mean a lot of people think super extraordinarily wealthy people are all stuck up and like this and that no no these are just super super nice kind loving people but that's the life that i grew up until i was almost 15 years old um, when my parents went through their first financial issues and we had to move off of linda isle and we moved to a neighborhood called belcourt in newport which a bunch of famous people live there too as i said doug DeSensei, one of my favorite baseball players growing up and um, i knew his daughter amy very well like that's that's the life that I grew up and I really hope I'm not boring you guys or irritating you guys with this I just really it's really important for me to share with you guys who I am and what I've been through and the haves the have-nots the struggles um, I've gone through an awful lot you guys and I know if I can get through what I've suffered through in, in my life everyone else can like June 23rd I'll come up with 10 years without one sip of alcohol guys and June 23rd, 2013, I checked myself into a treatment center called the Hills Treatment Center. It was my ninth rehab that I had checked myself into, the Hills Treatment Center, on the corner of Laurel Canyon and Mulholland Drive. It was like a mansion. I was the only non-famous person there. It was $150,000 a month, plus $10,000 cash up front just to get your bed there. They only had 11 beds, and as I said, I was the only non-famous person I know it's anonymity is the spiritual foundation of all our traditions ever reminding us to place principles before personalities or um, you know it's anonymity at the level of press radio and film I don't know if this would be considered press radio or film now so maybe but I hope I don't learn my lesson the hard way but one of my roommates was Indio Downey and I didn't put two and two together um, I didn't realize who he was um, I just thought he was just a, a, a spoiled kid. That's Robert Downey's kid. And then Robert Downey's ex-wife, Indio's mom, is super famous for her singing and stuff like that. So every parent weekend, she was always there. And just such down-to-earth people. But Indio loved me because I didn't know who who he was. Um, and so every, 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 like everyone else there did. And they were always kissing his butt, even the other famous people. Um, always kissing his butt because of who who he was but I didn't know until like week four and so that he told me he he really loved me because of that because I accepted him for who he was instead of knowing like I tripped out when I when I, when I found out though I couldn't freaking believe it um, let's see Lenny Dykstra was one of my favorite baseball players growing up we became super super close friends there um, one of the, the, the backup guitar players for the Queens of the Stone Age was there. Anthony Kiedis came to visit often. One of our, our other roommates, she was his manager. 
Um, she was super cool too. Like all these people were so down to earth. I thought they would be such stuck up pompous people. They certainly were. And for those of you who don't know, Anthony Kiedis is the singer for that band, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, Joe Torre, if you guys know who Joe Torre is, he used to manage the New York Mets, or no, sorry, the Yankees, and then he managed the Los Angeles Dodgers. While he was managing the Los Angeles Dodgers, or, or maybe right when he was, was done there, he actually paid to have his housekeeper at our treatment center. And uh, she was super, super nice too. And um, man, I, everyone that was there and for every alumni night, which was Wednesday nights, like all these old, old famous people used to like come, come through. And um, I'll tell you what though, this was the ninth rehab I had ever been to. But the, the difference between this treatment center and others that I have been to is that even though the message is the same everywhere you go, this was the first place I actually got the message. And I think it's it's because it wasn't a typical hospital setting or like extra sanitary and walls are scrubbed and just 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 a really sad place to be. Um, it, it was a five star type of a like resort and it was the first and o o only rehab where I didn't have to make my bed, um, they had people making our beds for us and 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 basically cleaning up for us <clears throat> um, you could pay extra money to have your pets there with you we had five star chefs our our chef our main chef was on i think it was episode three season four of intervention um he had a major heroin problem um he was in and out of gutters shooting up doing crazy stuff and now he's like a, a, a Michelin starred chef, but he was working there for just over 200 grand a year. And he would do breakfast, lunch, and dinner on the weekends. We had to fend, fend for ourselves for the most part. Um, but that's okay because everything in the refrigerators was just top, top notch. I mean, it was like steak and lobster all the time, you guys. Just incredible. We're gonna go back down the village this way. <laughs> And once again, I hope I'm not annoying you guys. I'm just sharing you guys, sharing with you guys what I've been through. Um, but yeah, every single Wednesday night for alumni night, um, a lot of the old folks, the alumni who stayed sober would come through and we'd have a, a big AA meeting and and hang out afterwards, drink drink coffee together afterwards and, and just talk. And um, yeah, it was, it was, it was it was freaking great. As I said, one of my all-time fav favorite favorite baseball players, Lenny Dykstra. And when I first saw him there, I'm like, oh my gosh, what's up, Nails? And he loved me from that point on because no one called him Nails there. Nails was his his nickname, and he he just fell in love with me because of that. I got to play catch with him a few times, which was incredible. But like he like looked up to me as much as I looked up to him, which was like awesome. He wanted to hang with me all all the time, and um, but that poor guy. We sat down and talked for a long time one day about what happened with, with with like him, and he was telling me he's not the sharpest tool in the shed, and and he's very very over, overly trusting, and his brothers and his brother and sister who were running his finances were stealing from him constantly and put him into such a bad hole, and then he started doing fraud and stuff like um like when it came to his house and selling things and um because he was getting screwed over and at one point he owned like 50 different car washes also i i, I think i can't remember what they were called I, I think they may have been named after him but he was telling me how how the bank and then when we drove by in hollywood he he showed me which bank that it was that just totally took him for a major ride and screwed him over and then he had to resort to like so much other stuff that guy never touched a drug you guys until he was in the uh, major leagues ever and that's when he he started touching powders and stuff and one day we're eating lunch and his buddy daryl strawberry calls him on the phone and i that's the third the third time i got to talk to daryl strawberry as a kid i used to go to a, a baseball camp every summer called mark cressy school of baseball and Mark Cressy was the bullpen coach for the Dodgers. And every week he would bring in 
a different Dodger to talk with us, go through some some fundamental training with us, and uh, um, it was it was just awesome, awesome, awesome. And I I actually at about 11 years old, and well, Mark Cressy School of Baseball was held at Marina High School in Huntington Beach, and. I got to actually pitch him batting practice while all the parents and all the kids are watching. I was one of about three different kids that got to uh, to a throw throw him batting practice, and this guy's ball was still rising, going over the fence. Like he was landing on the roof of the buildings behind Marina High School. It was just insane how far this guy hit the ball. But I asked him for his bat and his batting gloves afterwards, and he was nice enough to you know give them to me. This was the Kirk Gibson days too. And um, I got to go to game one. My dad had season tickets and we were at that game, game one against the Oakland A's when Kirk Gibson hit the game winning home run. Like that's like the, the most famous freaking baseball game ever. And I, I was there, I was eight years old. Just unbelievable, man. Guys, I've had a crazy, unbelievable life. Like a freaking crazy life, but once again, I'm sorry to share all this stuff with you guys. I know a lot of you are, are probably like, geez, I'm unsubscribing now because this is supposed to be about weather and he's selfishly just talking about himself. And if that's the case, I'm, I'm really sorry to see those people go, but you guys are my family and I want you guys to know everything about me and know what I've been through and know the struggles and the good things. And, and I just hope that we can have something together, you guys, something awesome together. I love you guys with all my heart. I love you guys so dearly. Um, and that's why I'm very, very happy to share all, the, all these things with you because also keeping things pent up and not talking about it is dangerous. And for me, it turns into what's called cold, cold anger is I don't talk about anything. And then all of a sudden, one little thing will make me explode. So uh, thank you guys for allowing me to talk to you guys and share my story with you guys there's a lot more to the story and i will definitely elaborate even more um down the road like when we do some of the, the much longer drives but i just want you guys to know who i am um what i'm about um the things that i've been through as i said none of this is trying to brag like none of the positive stuff is trying to brag it, it, it it's just to share what an interesting life i've had so far um but yeah guys Thank you guys for everything. If you guys don't hate me now for talking about all this stuff, please, please do me a huge favor. Hit the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I'm making videos so you can avoid it or you can watch it. Um, yes, 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 yes. There's no summit straight ahead. Let's zoom it, zoom it, zoom it, zoom it. It's 39 degrees. It is nine in the morning good morning brother can i just go home that way yeah, yeah. okay all right cool home. thank you well yeah. thanks bro yeah. you have a great day you too, thank you all right i feel like when i tell them these things they like think i'm i'm a tourist who's lying just to like try to get to like a closer parking spot or something because I probably would have done that in the past, you know? Say, hey, uh, I, I'm just going home. So can I cut through here to get to the closer parking lot? <laughs> but yeah, guys, I'm uh, I'm eternally grateful for every single one of you. I don't know where I would be with without you guys. You guys know I suffer with severe depression and uh, you guys have kept, you guys have saved my life. There's no doubt about that. My life has been saved because of you guys. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's nine. 07 in the morning. Let's get to the weather again. I know that's what this channel is supposed to be about. It's 39 degrees, 907. This is a big satellite parking lot for Snow Summit. It's called the Brownie Lot. Um, yeah, we have some more snow coming this evening. It's not going to be much, but guys, get ready for my thank you video for you guys and the video announcing the two winners of the $50 Visa or MasterCard gift cards. It makes me so happy to do this for you guys. It warms my heart tremendously. I love you guys so much and I am so excited. I can't wait to announce the winners. So once again, guys, it's February 5th, 2023. 
Just had a little rain and snow mix. I will talk to you guys later. Thanks again for not being annoyed by what I'm doing. If you really like what I do, hit the like and subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I'll get back with you guys later. Peace out.